It's going down tonight. <laughs> 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 all right guys welcome to the video today and um so this is cinematography simplified where i try and simplify cinematography techniques for you guys so that way you can uh make your videos look cinematic right so in this series today um in this episode for the series we're gonna talk about uh dof which is depth fulfilled so if you don't know what dof is depth fulfilled then i highly suggest that you know you get up to speed with what a shallow depth fulfilled is what a, a deep depth fulfilled is just oh like that's basically like camera settings so if you don't know what your iso does if you don't know what your shutter speed does if you don't know what your aperture does these three then you need to look up videos on those three. So the aperture, ISO, and shutter speed. But mainly it's the aperture of the lens, right? That's what controls the, uh, whether you're gonna get a blurry background or not, in other terms, bokeh. So um, that's uh, what the uh, shallow depth of field does. That's what that does. So, um, so in this video, what I'm trying to get to is I'm trying to help you guys use um this technique in a way that you can make your videos look cinematic right so that's the whole point of me even making this video is for me to make this video so i can get you guys to use um this technique to make your videos look cinematic so i'm going to be sharing with you how this technique is used in uh movies you know in uh film hollywood films and uh, in how I use it for my wedding films, right? Because I always do, because I do weddings, I film weddings. So I'm going to be sharing with you when I use this and why I use it and why you should be using it and why filmmakers use the shallow depth of field or deep depth of field to um, their advantage. So let's get into that today. All right. So how can you use a uh, shallow depth of field to your advantage? How can you use this technique to your advantage? So um, this technique is used to control what the audience focus on while they're watching your film, right? So it's a, it's a way that you can control what the audience look at first or last or whatever. So if let's say like right now um, where I am right here, and uh, if you look at this, everything in the background here, you can see that it's a little bit blurry back there and I'm more in focus. That's because I want you to focus on me. I mean, I want you to see that stuff back there, but mainly I want you to focus on me. So your focus is mainly going to be on me because I'm what's clear. Anyway, so how is um, the shallow depth of field used in you know films like i said it's used to control what the audience focus on if uh there's two people talking in a movie and they're like in a crowd of people usually um the aperture is going to be set to a shallow depth of field whereby only the people talking only the actors talking are what are going to be in focus and everybody else in the background they'll be blurred out and the reason being so you can pay attention to what is being said and to uh, move the story forward because if uh, you know other people that are in the background are in focus then you're gonna be looking like oh what's that person doing back there oh look they're doing backflips oh look they're kissing back there like stuff like that right but if that's not in focus then you can't really see what those people back there are doing uh, you'll be more focusing on you'll be more focused on uh, the person or the thing that's in focus and that's what a good filmmaker does a good filmmaker makes you look at what they want you to look at because that's how they move the story forward because they're telling the story to you so they're like okay so in this part of the movie I want you to look at this in this part of the movie or this sequence or this scene of the movie I want you to focus on this 
actor but i want you to focus on this object so it's so powerful because you can um you can visually tell a story by just um by just adjusting the aperture or let's just say um an actor enters a room right they enter a room and uh before they enter the room or while they enter the room you can see the door and you you can see the door right there but on the table there are keys on the table right there are keys on the table and you can see the actor enter the room but the keys are in focus so when they enter the room and they start searching around in the room without even saying anything or saying what they're looking for the filmmaker it has already explained that by focusing on the keys and everything else are blurred out they're gonna you know tell tell you that visually that this person is looking for the keys so that's why it's important to kind of like uh, control what the audience focuses on because you move the story forward because you can visually tell the story without having to use dialogue to tell the story you know like um okay like an actor says oh i'm tired man i'm tired it's better for the actor to act tired and to look tired than for them to tell you oh i'm tired so um that's what the aperture does that's what the shallow depth of field is used for so you use it to visually tell a story because you control what the viewers what the audience focus on without even using words or without you know yeah without using much words you can just kind of say okay so right now just focus on this because this is important in this story so like when i'm filming a wedding or if in the wedding film i'm focusing on one person like they're all dressed the same they are doing makeup but i'm focusing only on one person the most or one person or these five girls here all doing makeup or all walking but only the person that's kind of like closer to the camera and in the center is in focus and the other women walking are just a little bit in focus it's it's going to tell you right it's going to it's a giveaway right it's going to tell you like this girl is probably the bride or she's important to um this wedding film right so sometimes it might be the bride sister or the maid of honor or stuff like that so just by me um using the shallow depth of field kind of like just focusing uh on this person and um putting the other people out of focus a little bit will tell you that okay this person is important to this film so that's how you can use the shallow depth of field to uh you know move a story forward and make it more cinematic when you control what the audience look at it's easier to tell a story that means you are they're locked into the story you have them engaged in the story you know so it's always it's important that you um you know that you use this technique to your advantage um because once you control uh the narrative you control the outcome once you control the perception then you 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 know that's all a film is about it's it's all about like you know keeping people engaged and keeping keeping them you know hooked to the movie so the best thing to do is to control what they look at because um when you control what they look at you are controlling them and guiding them through the movie right so yeah unless like certain movies whereby they're meant to like confuse the audience you can do that as well with the shallow death of field like um uh somebody can this they could be a room of five people and then a detective can walk in and be like there's a killer among us in this room and then the, the camera focuses on one person and blurs out the other people you can kind of start, start suspecting that person to begin with just because the camera focused on that person first you can be like oh there's something sketchy i i, I knew it it was it's this guy you know it's this guy he's definitely the killer you know and then they're gonna reveal later that he's the killer or oh, that's what you think but maybe the filmmaker did that focused on that person to kind of like throw you off and that person is not even close to who did the crime or whatever so you can kind of fool your audience because you are controlling them psychologically by what they're viewing you know what i mean so if you control what the audience focus on and look at 
you control the film. So that's why Shallow Death Fulfilled, um, that's why it's good to use it because it controls your film. You can control your audience. And once you control the audience, once you win them over, like, you know, it's then you, then you got it, right? Then you got it. You got the sauce right there. Some people just use it because they think, oh, it looks cute. You know, the background is blurry. I want a bulk hair, blah, blah, blah. But honestly, you need to have a reason to use this technique, you know, especially if you're filming like a feature film or just like a short film, something where you need to control the audience and keep them engaged. You need to use this sparingly. You, you need to use this, um, you know, careful because if you just start throwing around using these techniques just to just cause you can do it just because your your, your lens is 1.2 you think okay i'm gonna use this because you know it's gonna look blurry but if it doesn't make any sense then you're focusing on the wrong things and blah 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 there's no point of using it so you need to use it if it makes sense and you need to use it to move your story forward because that's the um reason anyway of using it so you can move the story forward right in conclusion that's how you use a shallow depth of film you use it to control what your audience focus on to control what your audience look at and um, think about right and uh yeah so they're gonna you know know it's something important it means something to the story when you uh focus on that thing so that's how um, you use it to make your films more cinematic. I think um, that's all I have to say, you know. Hopefully you know how to use your camera manually. And um, yeah, I mean, you can achieve this look without having the camera, without using it manually, but it's better if you use it manually. That's what that does. It just helps you move your story forward and um, you know control what your audience focus on and it's very important that you control what they focus on because uh you know because your story depends on it you know it depends on you um controlling them and you know telling them okay look here look there do this do that because you're guiding them through the movie so that's about that guys hopefully you guys enjoyed um this video and um stay tuned for more videos in this series and hopefully i uh made some sense and um this content was valuable to you guys and if so make sure you subscribe to the channel right there make sure you guys subscribe to the channel and make sure you smash the like button if uh, you found this information to be useful okay guys so it's your boy francis and i'll catch you in the next one and make sure you watch all the other videos in this series. Links will be down below.